Welcome back to a Mylan's Moaning Minute. I have not done one of these in a while. This is when I go off script. I just have a couple of bullet points and I talk about whatever drama is happening in the Destiny universe. And what's been happening over the last week is a big discussion about the Destiny Content Vault. The reason for this is uh, Destiny Bulletin put out a tweet. As of today, the original DCV content, the Destiny Content Vault, uh, Red War Campaign, the Leviathan Iron Mercury Titan has been out of the game longer than it was in the game. And uh, Destiny 2 launched to Beyond Light, uh, 1,161 days, and Beyond Light to today, 1,000, yeah, 162 days. So for those who maybe have just discovered Destiny or have somehow stumbled across this video, yeah, Destiny introduced this idea of the Destiny Content Vault, where they vaulted content away. It was called a vault because it was meant to go in there for safekeeping and then come back out. Uh, people have made the joke now that it was a Destiny Content Incinerator because things went in there and then never came out, i.e. they just... It's been technically deleted from the game. And stuff has now been out of the game longer than it was in the game. Uh, obviously, this post caused up a bit of stir and uh, Paul Tassi wrote an article on it and a video and Astacross also covered the topic and now yeah of course I want to chuck my two cents in I do think I can add something to this conversation specifically I think this is irreversible damage to Destiny and Bungie I think this is potentially the beginning of the end when you go back and look at everything uh, retrospectively. The Destiny content vault uh, was a big blow to the population base, and I'm going to talk why it had such a big impact. And I also think for all the publishers and developers and the game companies out there, because I think Sony was like, oh, we want to have 10 live service games. I think this is like the hidden landmine of live service games. And I think all these companies and publishers and developers are going to focus on content, 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 uh, get content out quickly like Bungie did. And there is little thought about maintenance and it's going to come back to bite you in the butt. And ironically, this is a problem because Bungie was so successful in putting out content. But if you're a, <laughs> if you're a developer, if you're a publisher and you want to have a successful live service game, this needs to be in your plan. How do you maintain all that content that you are releasing? Because if you don't, I think there are very catastrophic consequences. <laughs> and you can see it as a case example, as a case study in Destiny with Bungie. Before we get into like the meat and potatoes about why I think this was so catastrophic for, for Destiny and its longevity, let's just talk about the original intention of this. And the original intention was Bungie was putting out so much content that it was becoming very hard to maintain from a technical point of view all the expansions and seasons and bits and pieces they were putting out. And the file size was also getting huge for players as well. And to be honest, yeah, I kind of agree. I don't need another Call of Duty in my life taking up my entire hard drive. And the underlining kind of message was that, would you rather us focus on making new content? Or would you rather us focus on just like updating and maintaining old content? And of course, Destiny player base, like nearly all gamers, be like, well, we want new stuff. And the Destiny player base is pretty ravenous for new content. And so... While there was definitely some disappointment for content being put in the vaults and removed from the game, it was also like, yeah, I would still rather play new stuff. And I'm sure the statistics also, you know, reinforced that in that very few players were playing all this old stuff and we want new stuff. So it kind of made sense from like a business point of view that Bungie's like, okay, yeah, full steam ahead. This stuff's going to get locked away so we don't have to deal with it. We don't have all these technical issues when we update the game, we change the lighting, we don't have to go back and change something that no one's playing. We can spend more of our time on the new stuff. And while it kind of sucks, I think people understood the thought process for it. On As to Cross's video, there was a, a top comment here with like 1.9 thousand uh, likes that they, they added a little bit more information to because this is a while ago now and they said uh, you need to remember that the original excuse was that the content vault was created so we could have bugs patched faster faster loading times in the tower they'll be able to turn out new content that is better and turn out faster with all that old content eventually returning of course you never got any of that right so yeah that they were making the game a more manageable size to keep up with the incredible pace they were putting out and Regardless of any criticisms I have of Bungie, I still 
think that what they have done with Destiny is incredible and the pace that they put out content is incredible and the quality in general is incredible and this is from someone who's now starting to play a lot of other games and go, damn, we had a lot going on in Destiny <laughs> very quickly. So I guess the question becomes, if you can understand like the technical reasons, even from someone who's not a developer, like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. You need to you know, put stuff away so you can work on new stuff. Even though you can understand that, why was it a problem to, to vault content? Well, there's a couple things. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> The first is the realization that the stuff in the fine print can be enforced. So I think most people understood that when you purchased Destiny, when you bought an expansion, when you bought a season, you didn't technically own it, right? You were getting a, whatever they call it. You were getting a license to play it for a certain period of time and a bunch of you could take it out. I think a lot of people understood that. And of course, some people probably didn't. There's probably some parents out there that got involved in Destiny and are like, where's the content going? Maybe. But there's a difference between it being in the fine print and it being enforced. And I think when it was enforced, like, hey, yeah, we can remove stuff from the game and you already paid for it and now it's gone and now you can't play it. I think that is a shock to the system. Uh, people in general are kind of used to subscription models and services like that with like Netflix and, you know, maybe there's a movie on there one one week and then it's gone the next and you can no longer watch it but i think when it comes to video games there's a lot more player investment there's a lot more person invested in the game when you spend thousands of hours doing something uh with your guardian that's been persisting over all these expansions and seasons and then some of that content gets removed it feels a lot more personal and i think people have a lot more issue with it in video games and especially with something like destiny that's not meant to be like a subscription this is like an interesting conversation too like the difference between a live service game and a subscription you know a subscription game you pay a monthly fee and then if you stop paying that fee you stop getting access to the game destiny's not a subscription game it's a live service game that you <laughs> paid for but still lost access to it you could argue that if destiny was a subscription game it would probably be better and ironically we for dedicated destiny players it is a subscription game because you probably pay in every month anyway so you could say that the model currently as a live live service game is is worse and i think that uh is obviously one of the major issues with removing content is the realization that hey you can take it out of the game uh and i'm not going to have access to stuff i've paid for and i think it is different for video games than other subscription models or live service models but of course, there are other issues that come with it. And the big one that comes to mind is the story. And how do you keep up to date with the story as you get a new player coming in? Or if you're an old player, how do you go back and relive some of those moments? And this was also a comment on Astacross's video by Nathan. Started in Season of the Haunted after a buddy tried to get me to play forever. My biggest complaint is that I don't get to experience the whole story. There's all these Guardian ranked memories of Cade and how now the little mission where he dies and all it means nothing to me because I don't know Cade. The death of Amanda Holiday meant nothing to me. Meant nothing to me either, so don't worry about that. Because I never got to know Amanda Holiday. All the past seasonal stories with characters like Marisov, Mithrax, etc that I don't, I don't get to experience. Hell, I don't even know what Nessus is at all. I just a weird planet that is there for some reason. If it wasn't for my name is Bive, <laughs> uh, filling these giant story gaps, I wouldn't have stuck around for the game but because I hadn't, wouldn't have any stake in the story. Right, so this, the existence of this channel is kind of proof of the point I'm trying to make. And same with my name is Bive. Like I believe that lore videos are popular because it's so hard to keep up with what's happening in Destiny's story, not only because of its delivery, I like, you know, listen to this terminal and the rest of it's in the law books that you have to read, but also because of content vaulting and that stuff is no longer there. And so the only way people can access this, access it is to buy the Destiny Grimoire Anthology, which by the way, I worked on or go to a law channel. <laughs> so of course, vaulting content impacts the continuity of story in the Destiny universe. And lastly, the big issue and the big problem with content vaulting is similar to the story, but just onboarding new players. And this is where I think that the irreversible damage has happened. And it's been a slow burn over many years, but the vaulting of content, I think then impacted 
how Destiny packages and bundles its expansions and seasons. And it is incredibly messy. And as a streamer and a content creator, people always ask, hey, I'm getting into Destiny or I want to get in Destiny. What do I buy? Where do I start? And we're like, I don't know. And it's that confusion that makes it very difficult to onboard new players. And I think we're seeing this now after years of potentially not getting those new players in and not having an avenue for them to step into the game and understand the story and understand the mechanics and see what's happened in Destiny's past and have a simple solution for purchasing all the previous stuff. And then it's complicated by Destiny being free to play and then new players seeing they have to pay for dungeon keys, they have to pay for expansions, they have to pay for seasons and it all gets a little bit too hard. And I think now we're at the point where the current players are also getting a bit fed up with Destiny and a bit fatigued with the franchise and we haven't seen an influx of those new players coming in because and I think one of those reasons is the Destiny content vault which then impacts how they package and sell previous expansions and seasons. I think it's pretty obvious that Destiny went full speed ahead in really trying to deliver new content right and i think everyone knows that regardless of all the criticisms um they put out an extraordinary amount of video game content what i think was neglected is the maintenance of all that content once it's been released and i think player onboarding has been severely neglected for a long time and now that you see that the veterans are starting to leave and you don't have new players coming in bungie is in strife and they've mentioned that they're burning through heaps of cash and they really need a success from the final shape. But, but, is it too little, too late? And is there a solution? I don't think I can even comment on what the solution would be. I'm not a developer. I'm a, I'm a big, dumb, dumb YouTuber and streamer. Uh, and I don't understand all the technical limitations of keeping this. But what I can talk about is from a consumer point of view, what player expectations are and what player think expectations are within a video game within a live service video game i think players expect there to be a core list of activities raid dungeons exotic missions crucible maps okay what, whatever you, you you decide what you think those core activities are that persist throughout the game okay and that remain and they're, they're pinnacle activities plus crucible maps etc and then there's other activities that if you want to go play, you've got to go back to a previous expansion, right? Because the, the Destiny universe has evolved and moved on and, it, you know, maybe that planet's not there anymore. Maybe this is not there anymore, okay? And things have changed. But you still have some sort of access to it. And I think that is what player expectation is, is like, it's a live service game. There are things that persist forever. <laughs> I think this is why live service games also need an endpoint, to be honest. And there are other things that if you want to go play, you can, but you've got to like download this version, okay? Of course, I imagine there is a ton of technical issues with doing that, a ton of money that's involved with doing that, but this is why I bring it up. It's like, if you are going to be successful as a live service game and all these publishers want live service games because they see how it attracts players and players stick with the franchise for quite literally a decade, they need to work out how they maintain the content that they make because I think eventually you'll reach a burning point like this, a breaking point like this, where you're not getting, you don't have a good system to onboard new players into your massive game because you've been doing it for 10 years and you've exhausted your current player base because of whatever's happening and now you're in a bit of strife. There you have it, Marlon's Moaning Minutes, my thoughts on the Destiny Content Vault. Hope you enjoyed. If you'd like to support the channel, can't think of a comment, you can just leave the word Destiny Content Vault. As usual, it's been a pleasure this Marlon Games. Peace.